So the first friend turned to the second friend and said, give me my money. Second friend gave him the 10 rupees. As the first friend was leaving the room, his conscience got the better of him. He turned to his friend and said, yeah, I can't take your money. I already saw this on the five o'clock news. <laughs> <laughs> to which the second friend replied, I also saw it. I didn't expect he would jump again. <laughs> and therein lies the human story. We do the same thing over and over again and somehow expect a different result. And that, my friends, has been defined as the definition of insanity. If you show up to work today because that's what you did yesterday, guess what you're going to get? Yesterday's problems. If you show up to work today because yesterday ended with last night and today is a new day, guess what will result? A new opportunity. Excitement is not something that can you, is not, it's contagious. They say attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? I've traveled throughout India and I've done that. Since I left America for America in 1986, I've probably come back to India. Maybe I can, I venture, this is my 37th trip. It's home. I come here four and five times a year just because I love being here. As soon as I cross the airport in Delhi or whichever city I enter, I'm home. This morning when I was eating breakfast, and you probably guessed I do eat a lot of breakfast. <laughs> uh, when I was eating breakfast, the guy looked at me and he's trying to impress me with all his Western cuisine. He says, sir, what can I get you? I said, something I can't get in Dallas. Bring me Italy. <laughs> this is home. But I want you to picture something. Do not look at the accent of the person making the speech. Do not look at the mannerisms of the personality trying to convince you. This is a learned trade because I'm a global citizen. I have learned a vernacular and a linguistic ability that communicates with the world. But my heart still beats for this nation. But you have to ask you. I'm not contagious by accident, folks. I'm contagious on purpose. I went and found the people who could inspire me. We need to stop hanging around with people who have the same problems we do. <laughs> Most people with a problem usually have a friend who has the same problem. <laughs> now we got two people with two problems and no solution, and you're solution providers. They call the phone, oh, welcome to ITT Tech, I'm a solution provider. Do you have problems? Yes, many. My friend has the same problem, but I'm a solution provider. That's an oxymoron. How can you provide problems for the world and you can't solve your own? And your problems are not that big. Here's the, here's the bottom line. Most people with a problem that you had before you came here, how many of you feel a little better as a result of spending 30 minutes with me? Physiologically, you feel a little better? Uh, now, did I put something in the seats? <laughs> no. My spoken word lilted your heart, erased some of the consternation, removed some of the doubt, replaced it with joy, and gave you a mental high. You actually have neurotransmitters at the end of those <laughs> cells on the nerve endings. And these neurotransmitters are, have receptacles where they keep neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine. When your brain gets excited, a mental jog begins and those neurotransmitters are released. If 30 minutes with a total stranger can release those neurotransmitters, imagine what a lifetime of input can do for your excellence. <coughs> Motivation is not permanent, but neither is bathing. But if you bathe on a regular basis, you'll smell better and live longer. <laughs> Same way with motivation. You need to be motivated daily to get rid of the demotivation of a negative society. Change your input. Learn to live your day by the clock, but your life with a vision. Change the circle of friends. Not eliminate them, but change the circle of friends to find some people who don't have your problems. Learn to practice empathy, not sympathy. See, sympathy is when four people in a company have a problem and they say, Hey, do you know we got that memo and the boss is expecting us to work 14 hours and the wife is pressurizing me at home and the family is asking me to do this and the other guy says, yeah, I'm having the same problem. Now you've got sympathy. People saying it's good to have problems, you're not alone, let's group hug. Misery loves company. Empathy.
empathy is when you say, hey, I had the same problem, here's what I found, and drag them to your side. Sympathy is a noble trait, but it doesn't solve the problem. It just makes sure the person who is having a problem understands other people have the same problem. Empathy is removing yourself from the problem and making sure the individual with the problem finds a solution. You become a hope giver. Okay? I wanted to share some of these things with you because these are just principles of workplace excellence. We chronicle them in a book called Top Performance that I wrote with a man named Zig Ziglar. Now, Zig Ziglar never went to college. Yet he's considered arguably the quintessential motivational genius of the last 50 years on the global scene. He's written 30 books, nine of which have been bestsellers. He proved you don't, if every PhD was a millionaire and every high school dropout was broken and dead, the world would have been a different place. Nobody cares about your education, folks. Nobody's impressed by your experience. But what people want is your legacy. I know some of us work hard to leave an inheritance for the ones that come after us because we didn't get that much from our parents. But the problem with an inheritance, those that get it are glad you're dead. <laughs> the beauty of a legacy is you can enjoy it while it's being built. See, if you ask my son, do you miss your dad? Of course he does. I have traveled most of his life. I've now traveled three and a half million miles, 55 countries. But if you ask my son, do you miss your dad? He says, of course I do, but who will tell the world about hope and love if he doesn't go? He understands it. Because I bless my son every day. So I'm going to open it up for questions. I want to be cognizant of your time because I know you have problems. And in 10 minutes, if we don't solve them, I'm really glad your companies get them back. And I can go on my merry way. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. What do you think about uh, striving for excellence mm -hmm. and earning more money put together? Money is not everything, but it ranks reasonably close to oxygen. <laughs> when you need it, there is no substitute. Money bought me a house. In fact, it bought me two. It'll never buy me a home with laughter. Money bought me a bed. It'll never buy me a good night's sleep. Money bought me a companion. It will not buy me a friend for life. It bought me a good time. It will never buy me peace of mind. I like the things money will buy, but I love the things money can't buy. You can get everything in this world that money will buy without any character. You cannot get any of the things money won't buy without that character. Balance is asking yourself two questions, as I shared with Paul earlier. You, balance is asking yourself, first question I got was from Mother Teresa when I met her. Have you written down how much is enough? Remember the farmer who said, Lord, I don't want all of the land. Just what's next to mine? <laughs> is one car okay? Two, three, how many can you drive? I met a guy in Delhi recently who has so much money he bought a Lamborghini. Now, Delhi is the only place where you can go zero to never, ever. <laughs> With traffic in Chennai the way it is, zero to 60 in six seconds means nothing. Why would you need a Lamborghini here? <laughs> you can't go anywhere. So that's an asinine desire. Now, if you want a Lamborghini, get a Lamborghini. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is money is one thing. But let me classify the second component. First is ask yourself how much is enough. Second, can you live on half of that? Until you can, you'll never have joy. Happiness depends on happenings. But joy is undiluted, it's unadulterated, it's pure. When you strive for joy, you will understand the difference between wealth and riches. Riches are when your best friend wants to hang out with you. Wealth is when everyone you love is proud of you. I've had more than I now have. I was a corporate vice president when I walked away to do some of the things that are the desires of my heart. I travel the world as an evangelist now for three months of the year and for nine months of the year, I, I tell people for nine months of the year I work for the corporations. But for three months of the year I work for myself. I enjoy.